hostages and the siege. Free the hostages and the siege. Free the hostages and the siege. Free the hostages and the siege. What do we need? Ceasefire. When do we need it? Now. What do we need? Ceasefire. When do we need it? Now. What do we need? affected by the horrific events of October 7th and are still standing here in solidarity with the Palestinian community in the midst of our grief. With both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia reaching frightening levels, this too is a chance to stand together against attempts to stoke divisions between minority communities here in the UK. We call for a ceasefire, a hostage exchange and an end to the siege on Gaza to fight the lie that occupation and apartheid are necessary and justifiable in the name of self-defense, and to end the false narrative that upholding these oppressive and brutal systems are key to Jewish safety. Hamas's taking of civilian hostages from southern Israel was a war crime, and on principle they should be unconditionally released, as should all Palestinians who've been arbitrarily detained. We are backing the Israeli family's demands for a hostage exchange, they'll hasten their return. As of November 1st, the number of Palestinians detained without charge or trial has risen to 2,070, with mounting evidence of torture and mistreatment. I am not here to call for a ceasefire. Whenever it comes, it will be too late. It is also a Hillel Hashem, an outrage, a desecration of God's name that we should have to voice the need for humanitarian aid for the people of Gaza. We fear for the hostages, cry with the families of the more than 1,000 Israelis killed and injured, as well as for the far greater number of suffering, terrified Palestinians. Amid Israel's aerial bombardment, ground invasion and intensified siege, Palestinians in Gaza have none of the most basic things that you and I take for granted. There is no phone signal, which means you can't call an ambulance when your home or your neighbor's home is bombed. If your phone does ring, it offers both the relief of connectivity and the paralyzing fear of bad news at the end of the line. Families under fire have to choose whether to stay together and die together, or whether to split up, even swapping children with other families, so that if some are killed, others will survive. If your local bakery hasn't already been destroyed, there's now just one loaf of bread for your whole extended family, if you're lucky. You're forced to queue for hours for water that is no longer clean. There is no formula left in the shops to feed your infants. For several weeks, hospitals have been using a new morbid acronym on a daily basis. W-C-N-S-F. Wounded child, no surviving family. In one video that tore my heart in two this week, a young girl who survived an airstrike wished that she was dead so that she wouldn't be left to live alone in a world without any of her loved ones. Nowhere is safe in Gaza, with residential blocks, schools and hospitals all being bombed. Thousands flee the north upon the orders of the IDF, only to discover that there is no reprieve from Israel's airstrikes in the south either. All this only compounds a man-made humanitarian catastrophe that started long before October 7th. With 75 years of displacement, 56 years of occupation and 17 years of blockade. No right to self-defense can ever justify this level of violence wrought upon so many civilians. So we have a choice. Do we align ourselves with those calling for revenge, weaponizing fear to justify war crimes, defending further brutal bombardment and siege, or do we stand up for freedom, equality, and justice for all Palestinians and Israelis leaving, living between the river and the sea?
aberration of the atrocities in Israel and Gaza are felt here in Britain too. Divide and rule politics is all around us. Whilst Jewish schools are defaced, mosques are attacked, and there are shared concerns for safety, the struggle against anti-Semitism is co-opted to mobilize far-right mobs. Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism continue to rise alongside increases in anti-Semitism. Let's be clear, our government does not care about the Jewish community unless we are willing to act as cover for their own anti-Palestinian racism, their foreign policy objectives, or their enthusiastic dismantling of our rights to protest. When groups claim to speak for the Jewish community, as if every single Jewish person in the country all speak with one voice, that is a false narrative and it must be challenged. We are here to make clear to our communal and political leaders that Jewish safety is inextricably linked to the safety of all minoritized and marginalized communities, including Palestinians. We have been cowed for a long time by threats, by allegations, but I see more and more people speaking up united. We are proud of our Jewishness. We are proud of our Jewish community that we are building collectively and we are standing for Israeli freedom and Palestinian freedom and ultimately ending the violence is the only way. My extended family have deliberately been kept separate from the land of Palestine where my father was born and expelled forcibly in 1948. I have been turned back from borders and denied entry as have most of Palestinians had members of their family who are treated in a similar way. I have been directly threatened at the border once and told that if I ever do anything against Israeli soldiers that they will get me wherever I am. Thank you. We are, as I believe Edward Said said, the new Jews, persecuted, landless and dispersed. And at present, when we have members of the Knesset saying that they want to wipe Gaza off the face of the earth. And when they say things like, Gaza needs to turn into Dresden, it's to try and take us back to a place where only might is right, and a world that allowed for, among other things, the atrocities of the Second World War. And to that we say, never again. Never again, and not in anyone's name. We know that there are many in our community who are worried and afraid right now. We are too. But you do not fight anti-Semitism through the suppression of Palestinian solidarity. We are not kept safe by racist attacks on our Muslim and Arab siblings. We are not kept safe by Suella Braverman or James Cleverly or their colleagues. And we will never be kept safe by besieging Gaza or building apartheid walls. There's a Hasidic story of the two lost people who come across one another in a forest. Neither has been able to find a path out, but each knows that where they have come from is not the way. Lo haderech. Together they decide to try to find a new way. Perhaps those two are we Jews and Palestinians. We cannot be silent in the face of collective punishment and forced displacement. We stand for life, not revenge, and a future of collective safety, equality and freedom for all Palestinians and Israelis. As Martin Buber wrote, since we share a love of an attachment to the land, let us work together in its service and find a way together. No borders, no nations, no Balfour Declaration. 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 Jews and Muslims won't be fooled. Say no to divide and rule. Jews and Muslims won't be fooled.